This video is sponsored by Plaud. Could AI replace humans? Absolutely not. If you don't learn AI, you will get eliminated. I was recently at the South by Southwest Festival in London and I listened to a lot of people talking about AI there. And there was one conversation I overheard in a cafe that got me thinking. There were two business owners and they were complaining about AI, how it was overhyped, how it just gave them generic underwhelming results, made things too complicated, and they'd basically given up on it. And I wanted to lean over and tell them, I think you might be doing it wrong. Because in this video, I'm gonna show you five ways to use AI that will actually improve how you work and it's not just about writing mediocre content that sounds like everyone else's because I think too many of us are using AI just like that a fancy typewriter asking it to write things for us from scratch and then wondering why everything sounds generic and soulless do you recognize that it's not the only way to use it look AI is here to stay and these are the easy ways to start using it in way more useful ways than you might have thought of and when you use it right there's also no need to be scared of it by the end of this video then I'm going to show you the practical approaches that can amplify what you're already doing. Plus, you'll discover some game-changing AI hardware that's genuinely useful. No complicated setups or expensive tools required. <laughs> Let's do it. AI doesn't exist without data and knowledge. Yeah. And that comes from you and people. Yeah, and totally. AI is here to stay. Yeah. So you have to like get ahead of it. And I'm embracing that in my workflow. So the first way that AI is actually worth using is for processing information that you're consuming. So here's the thing. Most of us are drowning in information these days. Meetings, articles, podcasts, videos, we're constantly taking in content and information, but struggling to actually use it effectively. This is where AI shines, not as a creator, but as a processor. The problem is we don't have enough information. It's that we can't efficiently extract what matters from the flood of content we're already consuming. But what I realise is that AI is best as a more subtle tool that helps you be present in the moment rather than frantically trying to take notes as you go. Take podcasts, for instance. I use the Snipped app to extract highlights and notes by simply triple clicking on my AirPod Pros. That's hidden AI doing a great job for you when it summarises what you've clipped. It's seamless, doesn't interrupt my listening, and I can review the key points later when I actually have time to think about them. And while there are lots of AI note takers out there for video calls, like apps, I actually think a hardware option is what's made this worth it for me. This is the ultra thin credit card sized Plaud Note, a red dot if design and good design award winning physical AI note taker that attaches and connects to your phone or it can just sit there on your desk. It has dual recording modes, meaning you can slide the lever up for calls or down for ambient face-to-face -face recording. And this is the Plaud Note Pin an even simpler device to have you capture notes with even less friction. And noticeably, it's got one press recording wherever you are. Two game-changing gadgets I didn't know I needed until I used them. The great thing about these is how simple they are to use to record, transcribe and summarize things like meetings, interviews or even lectures. It means you are able to be more present in the discussions and focus on your contribution and listening rather than changing focus to make a note. So transcription on both devices options boasts industry leading speech to text conversion and they'll give you 300 minutes of free usage time per month. AI summarization is delivered by Claude AI developed on GTP 4.0, O4 Mini and Claude 3.7 Sonnet and Claude also offers over 30 professional pre-designed templates for note-taking situations. And I practically like how the system automatically can label speakers and allow you to search back through the key points gathered easily. There's also an Ask AI feature that will allow you to quickly retrieve key information. So overall, I think what gives this the edge over app-based alternatives is that accessibility and flexibility. I don't have to remember to open the app to begin. I just have to do one press recording, right? Making it a wearable, flexible option. I think that's what makes that note pin particularly cool. So as I release this video, you can get your own Plaud AI for the best price available at the moment via my special link in the description to get started today. But this is just the beginning of Smart Capture. After using these tools for weeks, I can confidently say that AI works brilliantly for processing any kind of information you're already consuming. And the real game changer is how it actually helps you use that information instead of collecting it. There are some times when I try to train up a chatbot like on ChatGPT on maybe they can adapt my writing style so that I can do some initial brainstorming in terms yeah. of like the caption that I want to use 
or like some content ideas because I've been feeding them data or for example all these top three pieces of content is the best performing right. of my social platform right, so I was right. like okay this is the direction that I'm going yeah it's just like feed them a lot of data and like stats and metrics and see like how can I maximize the chances of the new piece of content to be doing well on yeah. social platforms so the second actually useful way to use AI is as a research partner, not a replacement for your own thinking. Here's where most people are getting AI wrong. They ask it to write entire pieces of content and then wonder why everything sounds generic and soulless. So I experimented with a completely different approach and honestly, it has changed a lot. So after using ChatGPT for quite a few years now, I've actually recently moved to switch my paid subscription to Anthropic Claude. And this was my best decision in a long time. It's way ahead, I think, for quality of research and certainly writing style. Now, the big game changer is to make yourself a project, meaning you can actually train it to work more like you, not sound like a generic system like everyone else. I also use Speechify in my writing and research process. It's an AI-driven app that reads anything back to you and helps speed up your learning. But here's a hidden feature that uses AI. I can clone my voice to listen to drafts for videos to check them. How cool is that? I don't know if that's a bit nepotistic, but yeah, another AI feature in Speechify. How cool. Now, if you are interested in the weird world of cloning your own voice, check out Eleven Labs, who are making serious ways in that department. Though I'm not sure how I feel about the whole voice cloning thing in general. Let me know what you think in the comments. So when I was preparing this video, I didn't ask AI to write a script about AI tools. Instead, I worked with it to research current trends, organize my own experiences, and I gave it a structure to work from of the things I wanted to talk from. The script you're hearing right now is the result of that class collaborative process, it's helped me challenge my assumptions and refine my arguments. So that means that I'm basically providing the concept, the sponsor integration, my personal experiences and overall structure. So AI helped me organize it, refine the flow and ensure it matched my tone of voice, which it learned from experience of previous work because I shared some old writing. This approach maintains your unique voice and perspective whilst leveraging AI's ability to process and organize information. And the difference in quality genuinely is nice and day. And speaking of unique perspectives, I'm curious, let me know in the comments what your biggest frustration with using AI is right now. Do you use it? If so, how? Drop your thoughts and while you're there, if you're finding all of this useful, hit the like button. So I use a lot of Notion AI specifically. I use it to write the stories for my games and basically prompt AI to look through my information and give me any info I might need for like certain cutscenes and stuff like that. And then I also use ChatGPT, especially when I'm like trying to do like creative content stuff, basically brainstorm with ChatGPT to give the ideas. I use a lot of ChatGPT and Claude, um, both for sort of research or writing, like Claude mainly for writing. So I write a newsletter weekly yeah. um, and I'll use that for drafting and working on it. I'm horribly dyslexic, so it helps like a, almost like a, a Grammarly replacement, which is nice. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I have almost exactly the same use case for, for Claude. It's great. Right? It is really good. Okay, the third way AI is actually worth your time is automating repetitive tasks in your existing workflow. We spend way too much time, in my opinion, on routine tasks that don't require creative or strategic thinking. Things like organizing files, formatting data, and managing routine communications. So I spent a month or so identifying every repetitive task in my workflow and testing some AI solutions for them, and the results were pretty surprising. I'm now using make.com to create simple automations that draw on AI via a kind of AI agent interface to handle my admin processes. A perfect example of this is how it sorts incoming emails into categories for me with a chat GPT connection and sends more thoughtful first auto email responses to customers so that we can help them faster until we get back to them personally. That's particularly true around my Notion Live OS templates, which are a brilliant plugin to all of this if you want to check them out. Because I've also got smart AI tags in my second brain, categorizing my notes and making it all more searchable. Even calendar optimization is possible with AI that helps you schedule better time blocking, although I'm not sure that's for me. The result, I'm now spending about six hours less a week on administrative tasks. And those hours can now be shifted to either time off or strategy, creativity, and relationship building for my business. Really, that's just the stuff that moves the needle, right? 
The key is identifying the repetitive parts of your workflow and then finding ways to simply get AI to plug into those systematically. I've linked a video on my make.com automation below and there's a few of them on the channel if you wanna learn how to use them. I've even made some blueprints you can download for free. things I do as a software engineer and game developer, Notion AI really helps me speed up all the processes. For example, with that Notion AI, I think setting up a project or like working on a game would take a lot longer than it normally does. Before Notion AI, a game would take me around a year to make. Now it takes me like five months. It's really quick now. Because I have like a base to begin with and Notion AI helps me prompt it. A lot of the story stuff, a lot of the setup for my games, Notion AI can kind of help me guide, like guide me through that. I'm quite a new programmer and I have AI in my development environment and I'll ask it questions. It's kind of like Google searching, but with a bit of extra smarts behind. Amazing. Are you getting it to code or help you code? Uh, I get it to write little snippets, but I always type my code myself. Yeah. I think okay. we're still at the stage where it's figuring out like what it needs to do. Um, and it's given me some false answers before, so I'm still a little bit skeptical, but yeah, it is yeah. super helpful for a, a new programmer like me. So this next use case for AI is genuinely one I think not enough people are considering, and it's really good. It's for personal support and learning. So traditional learning resources are often a bit one size fits all, right? They're not tailored to you. But since AI can adapt and respond to you in specific ways, there's a couple of ways to use it to learn or work on yourself that are just fantastic. But AI can adapt to your specific needs in fascinating ways. So I've tested this in several areas recently, and my two favorite use cases for this are that people, including me, are using ChatGPT on their phone to talk to for mental health support and learning languages through conversational tasks. Hi, okay, could you help me with um, some good solutions for dealing with anxiety uh, when you feel like there's a lot of pressure from deadlines? Absolutely. Dealing with anxiety from deadlines is a common challenge, but there are some practical strategies that can really help. When a deadline feels overwhelming, it helps to break the project into smaller, more manageable tasks. This makes it easier to focus on one step at a time and reduces that sense of being overwhelmed. ¿Cómo te llamas? Me llamo Simon. Uh, go ahead and repeat the answer whenever you're ready. Me llamo Simon. Perfect. That sounds great. Let's try another one. ¿Cómo estás? Estoy bien, gracias. Go ahead and give that a shot. Estoy bien, gracias. Excellent. You're doing really well. Let me know if you want to practice more phrases or if you'd like to try out. So using the conversational voice mode on your phone is totally brilliant. You should give this a go if you haven't. It can genuinely offer you a new, tailored, conversational learning experience. It's really genuinely cool. For skills development, I used AI to identify my specific knowledge gaps in automation workflows and got it to explain some of the more complex concepts to me in analogies that made sense. So then I was able to more quickly apply tools like this in things like make.com and it's super Suited to my level. And in that conversational sense, it's also great as a kind of mind mapping partner, someone that can bounce ideas back and forth with you, explore different angles, and also push your thinking into different directions without it then just generating generic output, which we've talked about. What I discovered is that AI can adapt in real time to your understanding and provide explanations that make sense to you specifically. I found some of the interactions to be thoroughly thoughtful and really positive as bits of personal personalized guidance. So one example, yeah. and we're literally testing this right now, okay. is we have a lot of landing pages with Vimeo. Like, hey, this is um, a webinar. Hey, this is a, a new product that we're launching, right? Lots of motion and animation, but what's the content that lives behind that? Yeah. So we will use generative video to populate all the pages as a preview. Here's an example with IT sector, and there's like people on their desk working. But they're not the focus, it's the product that's yeah, focused. Yeah, so great. it's like background. That's cool, yeah. Right, you know, love like, that. And like you present that to a product owner or a person that's going to sign off the brief or the creative, and they are very much more in the world. They understand it more. Right? Yeah, yeah. You've, totally. You provide the context. Yeah. So that's like a classic example. That's well. a great use case. Yeah, yeah. okay, great. I think great. that's it, isn't yeah. it? It's like finding the thing that you think just improves or simplifies or shifts the what makes your product or your work better and, and it adds to it, yeah. 100%. The fifth way that AI is really worth considering is when it's directly integrated into your creative applications. 
I used to work in visual effects. In the visual effects, we would spend time what we call rotoscoping, rotoscoping people out. You don't have to do that anymore. AI can analyze the image and do the auto roto, which means as a creative, I can focus on the things that I love doing, which is, yeah. isn't cutting out 24 frames a second. It's now focused on how to make a visual effect shot look good. This isn't about AI replacing your creative work. It's about AI solving specific problems and making you faster and better at the bit you want to be doing. I've been experimenting with AI features built into apps that I already use, and this is genuinely where it starts to shine. AI can fix coding problems in real time, help remove backgrounds or track subjects in like video editing tools like Final Cut Pro. There's actually a really cool little uh, insert section in Canva, and it's kind of free, incredible. And I really like the generative fill in Photoshop to solve those complex visual challenges that used to take forever when you were like, well, how do I extend the background of that image, for example? These aren't generic AI outputs. They're sophisticated tools that just enhance what you're already doing yourself. That, again, is great, using it as an assistant. And I think what makes this approach stand out is the AI can understand the context of the work you're doing in that app. It's not generating content from scratch. It's solving that specific technical problem. You can maintain complete creative control while AI handles that tedious technical bit. And so you're not replacing you as the artist. I still think you can be an artist and use it because it's just helping you refine what you're doing. I don't know, where do you stand? Is there a kind of moral question on that one for you artists out there? Let me know. Could AI replace humans? Absolutely not. If AI were to replace humans, we would just be very similar one to the next. We're gonna learn how to own AI yeah. and become human in the loop. Yeah. No. I think AI is not meant to replace people. I think it's meant to or assist or be an augmentation of what we do. I don't think it should replace us. I think it should assist us to do like the more monotonous tasks and the things we do a lot, like repetitive tasks. Yeah. That's what AI should replace, but not the creative stuff. I don't think it could replace artists. And when I say artist, it means that when you create something, most of the time it's to do with your gut feeling. And also it's about the trained eye. And art is very subjective as well. Yeah, yeah, totally. You know, it, when you're a filmmaker or a game developer, it's taste making. AI doesn't do taste making. AI does task incredibly fast. I don't think it will. Um, I think AI is really good at coming up with things, but it's not very good at joining the dots together, which is kind of what a programmer is for. You need someone to be able to understand the whole system, understand which bits connect. I think it's the same question with design. Like I'm seeing quite a bit of, oh, AI is going to replace designers, but it can come up with good looking stuff, but it's yeah. about being able to connect all the dots. I think that's always going to be a human's job. So there you go, five ways to use AI that are actually worth your time. But notice what they have in common. They are all about augmenting your existing skills and workflows, not replacing you. Those are the people getting real value from it, not just some magical content generator. But if you want to make any of these AI tools infinitely more valuable, you're gonna to wanna to build some solid organization systems that actually support them. So for that reason, I really recommend watching this video next on how to build a second brain that actually works to hold all of your ideas. Or if you're interested in that email automation I mentioned from make.com, there's a tutorial and demo down here. It would be great if you hit the subscribe button. If you haven't, hit my face and uh, I'll see you on the next one.